a floor in a residential structure. It will not be a circle or a square. It'll be in a regular pattern because of burn patterns. It burns in irregular shapes. Okay, in this case, there was carpet over the floor but in between engineered wood I-beams that had already failed due to the severity of fire underneath it, which created this pooling effect known as a cavity effect. So you have a little red flame, that's obvious, but it may not be this obvious. One of the things we teach is in that low, medium, high method we learned in scanning, we take our nozzle when we're away from the fire and we sweep the floor low first. I was taught that years ago because there was bad stuff on the floor. What I learned through thermal imaging use is that it creates contrast, temperature difference, which allows me to see things I wouldn't normally see. And if I wait just a few seconds, if there is a low spot in the floor, the water will pool, creating what's known as a cavity effect, which creates a dark spot, which tells me don't step there. So let's look at an example. This is an actual hole cut in a floor in a college dormitory with a heat source to the left of it. When the camera switches to low sensitivity, the hole in the floor is not very clear. But when the camera switches to high sensitivity, which means low temperatures and high sensitivity to detail, the hole in the floor becomes more visible. This is why we teach to stay low with the camera and try to keep the temperatures low. It's good for survivability and tenability of the space. It also helps us with clarity and detail because the camera performs better typically in a lower temperature environment. In, in regards to detail. If you notice when the camera switches back here in a few seconds, you will notice that at this very moment that hole becomes clear. That's what we're trying to attain is better clarity. So this looks an actual fire ground example. This was an abandoned house where a homeless individual had started a fire in the bedroom to stay warm. As we approach we're scanning the ceiling, scanning the walls, looking for any signs of heat. The floor looks pretty clear. There's not any signs of any danger that you can see that's visible. That's why it's difficult to see holes in floors with a camera per the studies. Most firefighters don't scan appropriately and they can blend in as you can see here. Remember in the beginning I said holes in the floors will have a jagged appearance. If you look really closely you could have seen that jagged edge line around where it burned through. That's about a two foot drop through the floor. This is why we advocate stopping, scanning, sounding, flowing water, and checking. You may think that's a little bit much, but if you're in an environment where you're not sure, it's always better to check first before we go. I was looking at another example, such as a commercial building, where a hole in the floor may not be in a regular pattern. You may have a grate, as you see in this example. You may have a square from a pit or a circle, depending on what it is. Just remember, when we're looking for anomalies or things that could get us in trouble, we have to consider the context of the space we're in. Residential versus commercial will change the game. At this point, many people would ask, well, what about all the studies that say a tick cannot gauge structural integrity or be able to tell me if there's a fire beneath me? In essence, that statement is true. But here's the problem with that statement. You have to look at all the other variables and very few people read the last little part of it where it says it is recommended to scan the whole room and pay close attention to areas where there may be breaches for heat transfer, such as heat registers, baseboard, trim areas, and things of that nature. Those are called areas of heat transfer or thermal. So let's look at a couple of those examples. Here's a floor register with a fire beneath. The fire is on the first floor. Areas such as junctions between the wall, junctions between the wall and the roof, holes in the building envelope for pipes and cables, windows and door reveals steel wall ties used in masonry construction. Any of those could be thermal bridging. The insulation or caulk around doors and windows can fail showing heat behind it. That's an example of thermal bridging. Just keep that in mind when you're looking for these types of heat transfer. 